It took me six weeks to get permission from the tribal council president to enter this native only island. Woo, that's cold. 740. That's a jawbone of a bowhead. What is it like killing a whale? That line over there is Russia. Very, very powerful energy. Everybody should definitely feel blessed to be out here far from the world. Tundra. Tundra. You're 10 bucks a gallon? So we usually put our feet together like this. You know the snow gets all the way up to the top here. Nick, you're a police officer on the island, right? Yes, sir. This is a dinosaur bone. These are uh, some of the oldest houses. We eat them. Sea peaches. Guys, I've seen a lot of the world. This is one of the most beautiful places by far I've ever been. Good morning, guys, here in Anchorage, Alaska. And today we have quite an adventure we're going on. We're going to a place called St. Lawrence Island. Now, St. Lawrence Island is a private island, but the sixth biggest island in the United States and is completely controlled by the natives, by the Yupik people that I've been told still live off of a whale hunt every year. Place is so far out there that it's actually west of parts of Russia. So we're gonna fly up to Nome, then get on a puddle jumper and go out to St. Lawrence Island to get a better understanding of how the people live there. Let's do this. That's cold. All right, guys, so when you look at Google Maps and look down on the United States, press the little guy, the green lines come out for roads. You know, it's one big blob in the lower 48. But when you look at Alaska, check it out. It's like a few roads and then a bunch of locations that you fly into. Most of the state is by plane. You can't drive to places like this. Florida. It's gonna be a lot colder what? there. It's gonna yeah. be a lot colder there than here. It's colder there than here? Yeah. All right, this is about 50 degrees. It's perfect. <laughs> you were saying this graffiti here is what? It's all kinds of random pictures from other villages up oh, here. The last time. Okay, so that's like the secret place to put them. I like it. You're gonna like the movie. I'm so excited. This is like a, my dream come true. This is so cool already. Okay, here we are on the island. Uh, it's a good thing you didn't get in yesterday. It was uh, raining and <laughs> stuff. Oh, it's beautiful, Sonny. Wow. Just met Sonny at the plane, and he's bringing me up to the town here. Oh, man, I've wanted to come here for a long time. Well, where did you come from? Florida. Florida? Oh, nice. Go run to Santa's. <laughs> so this is one of the main streets. Yeah, this uh, used to be our old fire hall. This is the city hall. City hall, the red one. Yeah, one of the oldest buildings, I guess. This was a washateria. You know, like where we wash our clothes, take showers and stuff. We used to carry water from that uh, pipe right there. Okay. We'd have to carry water. We didn't have indoor plumbing or anything yet. So that's where everyone in the town would go to shower? Uh, basically, yeah. When did you get indoor plumbing, indoor hot water? I want to say uh, 2008. OK. These are uh, some of the oldest houses. OK. Yeah, you can tell um, how they're dipping from the permafrost melting, I guess. OK, yeah. So how old are some of the oldest houses? I think these ones are about 60. Maybe 60, 70 years old. 
So in Savunga, you have to have a four wheeler or snow or and a snow machine, right? Yes, yes, essential. Is this an old boat? Oh, that's a skin boat. That, those are the frames. That's a framework. Okay, and uh, that's a that's a boat. That's a whale boat. Oh yeah, well that's the jawbone of the whale. Yeah. Oh, can we stop? Oh yeah, for sure. No way. Check it out. Uh, might be a little wet. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you're, you guys are doing a hunt every year. Yes. Um. Every uh, spring we uh, hunt the bowhead. Nothing on that is wasted. Everything is taken. It feeds the whole village. One whale feeds the village for like, a, like the whole year. Uh, basically, uh, maybe half the year. We still rely on uh, seal, walrus, birds, reindeer. Reindeer, yeah. What's this? Uh, our water and sewer. Okay. Uh, it's above ground, I guess. Uh, I don't know for what reason. Uh, that's Probably the because the permafrost, like Probably the freezing and yeah, thawing. And, um, in case like. Pipe breaks, easier maintenance, maybe. Sure. So what do you guys do for entertainment, let's say? Like, when you have some off time, is it hang out with your friends, yeah. or...? Yeah, we hang out. Uh, me and my brother game a lot. We like uh, video games. Sometimes we uh, use uh, our phones. <laughs> Fishing, shooting. We do a lot. Yeah, so this is... How old is this, do you think? Probably say from like the 60s to 70s. Okay. High winds did this. Sometimes our blizzards go up to like 70 to 110. Miles per hour, 110 miles per hour. Yes, sir. Wow. So you just have to hunker down. Oh yeah. Some of us uh, brave the storm for a pack of smokes. <laughs> 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 One year it was like 100. I was like, man. I'm going, I was at like a 45, <laughs> clinging on. I, I seen people uh, sliding back, you know? <laughs> okay, so that's it right there. Yeah, that's a jawbone of a bowhead. Look like a 60 footer, 65 foot, somewhere there. 55. You can tell just by that jawbone saying that's a 65 foot whale. About 60, 55, okay. 60 maybe. We try to get the bigger ones, the older ones. Give, okay. her, give the younger ones a chance to grow, mate, reproduce. Okay. Uh, very respectful of them too. Uh, we we give thanks when we get them. All of us gather and uh, share a bite right out on the water. We take uh, monk duck out uh, the whale blubber, eat okay. it. Is that like the whole town participates, or just like oh, a there's, few hunters? Uh, there's yeah, there's hunters, and um, whole town goes and helps. You know, we do it by manpower. The women get the share first. They get to take their share. Okay. Uh, so there's chivalry here in the culture. Oh Ladies yeah, first. women are just as important as men. Yes, they keep our clothes in check, dry, ready for the next hunt. Uh, they take care of the kids, obviously. Each role is important, especially out here. Uh, no man's land, you know. Could you imagine uh, living out here without any help from the outside world? <laughs> you you so have to rely on everyone for help, huh? Oh yeah, uh, we, we help each other out a lot, yeah. Okay, the gas station. Really? Yeah. What's the price right now? Uh, you can buy it right there. Check it out. You're ten bucks a gallon? No. No. Seven ninety four for one point three gallons. Okay, so what is that a gallon like? Five something? Yeah, about like five fifty. Okay, so it's not super crazy out here compared to the mainland. Do gas prices really affect you guys? Do you oh, feel yeah. it out here? Uh, we fuel our, you, can, you see that jug right there? Yep. That's stove oil. Most of us have uh, what we call a laser heater. Okay. Stove oil heater for the homes. Yeah, it gets pretty tough sometimes. Sometimes we'll borrow from each other. So that's your biggest expense really, huh? Mm -hmm. Oil? Oil, Heating yep. fuel. What is this? Guitar pick. Oh, it's a guitar pick. Yeah. Guitar so that's that's whale bone. Whale no, 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 no. That's the baleen. baleen. What do you mean by baleen? Well, it's like the whale's teeth. Inside the whale. Oh. They open their mouth, there's lots of those. They use like filters. Okay. And then they chop the quilt and they eat the quilt. Can I see? There's uh, two types of whales, baleens and tooth. Okay. So I'm not a guitarist, but I can oh. see this is super lightweight. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and it's durable too. Flexible a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
It's like almost the same material as our nails. Basically. Right, right. <laughs> this is a hunting blind. We uh, people sit here with their gun. Uh, mostly, uh, we try to do it on the north wind or whenever wind coming this way, so we could get our seal in or. Okay, so you're hunting from here. This is sort of like... Yeah, look, you can see someone's seat. Okay, so they're waiting for seals to come in? Yeah. And they're just shooting... They shoot they're shoot they're doing that using shotguns? No. 223 is the preferred caliber. Okay, so you hunt the seal, you hit it, it comes into sea, and then you bring it up yeah. to shore. We got uh, seal hooks, too. We uh, wind it, throw it out, It'll pull the hook the seal, bring it in. No, gut it up right on the beach and uh, bring the meat home. Okay, so you were telling me that line over there is Russia. Russia, yeah. That's all Russia right there. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's just right there. And you were telling me Russians used to come over. You're, you're, uh, you're native. Native, so native. your people basically. Yeah, yeah. Siberian Yupik. Siberian Yupik. And they would uh, do their dances. We used to have a festival each year. Um, I think it stopped uh, 95, I believe was the date it stopped. Okay, so they would come over across the ice or like by boat or boat. what? Skin boat. Skin boat Walrus on the ice. Walrus hide boat. Walrus hide boat, no way. Yes way. You remember that? Yeah. Do you think it will come back ever or just the relations between oh, the countries um, are so bad that it's... Some of the youngers, they're trying to bring that back bring dancing and um, you know share of our culture how's it how it changed through the years and this island i was reading is the sixth biggest in the united states oh awesome st lawrence is massive and flying in here you can see how huge it is it stretches forever yeah and we just take up a small part of it right and so when you live here do you um do you go off into the countryside much or you just oh much yeah well, i love uh when, when I was younger, uh, my uncles used to bring me, a, we'd go all over the side of the island. They would show um, which camps used to be there and where they used to hunt, travel, different clans, basically. So does everyone sort of has to get along here with one another? I'm sure there's, in, you know, there are always problems whenever you put a bunch of people together, but oh, like, yeah. you, you guys really rely on each other. Oh yeah, for sure, yeah. Okay. Everyone knows everyone. Honestly. Everybody knows everyone. Yeah. So, do you have like a police force or anything? Oh yeah, VPSOs, village police safety officers. Okay. Some people do get in trouble, yeah, <laughs> but not as often as uh, you know everywhere else. <laughs> right. I bet. You, so you... this one's in good shape here. Oh yeah, definitely. It just needs the hide. What hide goes on Walrus there? Walrus hide goes on there. They were uh, starting a program trying to bring back uh, how to make the walrus hide and other stuff. You know, it's very useful. Okay. And it's basically free. You just gotta go hunt it, you know, and then you got a boat. <laughs> What's he hunting right now? Oh, he's just uh, probably target practicing. That's gotcha. a BB gun. Yep. This one? Yeah. A barge comes in and uh, fuels up the school. Okay, so a, a fuel barge comes in here and they run the pipe in to this? Yeah. And that's how you guys fill up? Yeah. Okay. Same deal with our gas station. Our food rarely uh, goes bad. Walrus, seal, well, you could uh, dry them for years. Oh, really? Yeah, it still tastes good. They even eat them aged. Okay, so these were these are old coolers for your yeah, food. Yeah, they're basically uh, freezers. And so you just have to go down a little bit and then you're in the, the cold soil tundra, right? Under there is uh, clay. Okay. You don't use them anymore, they use freezers. No. So when you say with your whale it could last for years, like how do you, how do you eat it? So you, you cut it up, right? Then in the, in the old days, not even that long ago, you'd put them in these, right? Mm -hmm. And it would just stay cool down there. Not frozen, right? Or frozen? It would stay cool. Just stay cool. And whale staying cool can stay good for how long? Like how long can you eat that? Probably like two years or so. Wow. I had no idea. Yeah, okay. even our meat, you could, uh, if we go around town, uh, you'll see some people's meat racks. Those okay. are from the spring hunt. Still very edible. That was our meat rack. Okay, all these wood beams are meat racks. Yeah, you don't need to clean them either. Do you see? 
right. This is the school, K through 12. Playground. Do you know the snow gets all the way up to the top here? All the way to the roof? This all gets covered. So you're just buried here in the winters. Yeah. Basically one big igloo after that. Playing basketball. It's uh, one of our favorite sports. Uh, both both villages love basketball. So this is still the island. I'm seeing that mountain down there, yeah, right? Yeah, that's the halfway point. Um, you know what I just noticed? I can't believe I've just been on this high of being here. There are no trees. No, not one. Mm -mm. Tundra. Tundra. Yeah. So not one tree back there at all. We're not one. we're too far north. Only the dead ones you see that wash up from somewhere else. <laughs> Sunny just took off, so I thought I'd sit down here in the grass for a bit, try to take this place in. Gotta say it has a very, I mean, first impressions, a very, very powerful, powerful energy. I feel very humble here. I feel very small. A couple reasons. I'm on, you know, someone else's land and I was invited here, or they accepted me here. They didn't, I, I asked to come here, uh, but they accepted me. Uh, secondly, it's about as raw and rugged as it gets. The expanses are massive. Just where we are, this is the Arctic Circle up here. There's Russia right over there. The island is quite massive. Absolutely stunning here. And I gotta say, I'm just sort of going slow right now. I don't want to um, really be in anyone's face with a camera and uh, I want to talk to people, obviously, so I just have to feel it out though first. A lot of these times in the shoots uh, with this type of work, you know, if someone doesn't want to be in camera, on camera, I don't want them on camera. Like, I'm the last one that wants to do that. So, in an environment like this where I'm so out of place and I don't really have my grounding yet, I just want to go slow with this. I do have two more days here, so I'm sure we will get into some interesting stuff. It's amazing so far already. Possibly baleen, or it might be a plastic. So that's just a sled in the winter. You just bring everything around on. Yeah, that looked like it's a sled for like holding um, maybe a Evan Rood or a boat. What's this, Nick? Stegosaurus. This right here? Yeah. It's a bit embarrassing, but what is a Stegosaurus? Dinosaur. Okay, this is a dinosaur bone? Yeah. So how did it end up here? We Thawed out from the ice? Or? No, we hunt dinosaurs. <laughs> no, it's a bowhead whale. <laughs> nice. I like it, Nick. You're playing with me. Yeah. Good stuff. You can tell the tourists anything. They'll believe you out here, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, they will. We're preparing for uh, halibut. Halibut? Is that what you're fishing now? Yeah. So, Nick, you're a police officer on the island, right? Yes, sir. Your great-great-grandfather? Yeah, he pretty much uh, walked... Mommy, Daddy, Daddy! Look, right there is Mom. He pretty much walked every step of this island with his feet. Dog sled, feet, run. Your great-great-grandfather would herd the reindeer here yep. by dog sled. Dog sled, yep. Oh. Wow. And my, my, my dad, who I'm adopted to, uh -huh. was, uh, he was one of the last people on the island to use a dog sled to traverse. There's the cliff. And then when you look beyond the cliff, yep, at that point, supposedly there was 10,000 people living there. All around the island we could find lots of camps, old uh, villages. And uh, that one was said to be one of the most highest populated. And they all died from Christopher Columbus and his disease. No, not Christopher Columbus, but... Uh, yeah, when were they there? When was the last one? Like, maybe in the 1700s or 1600s? 1500s? Okay. Look at what I found. Not 10,000, but... I, or, yeah, 10,000. We picked these. What are they? The box. They're sea peaches. We eat them. Sea peaches? We picked them during fall time. I don't know what the hell their English name is. Sea peaches. We cut them open. We cooked these ones. We could eat these ones raw, but 
They're a little sandy right now. We have to wash them. Would you want to try some of this? We call them crunchy. I'd love to, yeah, for sure. But they're a little sandy. I try to wash them in it the ocean. It makes it extra crunchy. And yeah, we call them like crunchy. It. Everybody likes to see crunch. them like this? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they like might it? taste pretty nice. salty from Fukushima, but it's all right. <laughs> you could have the whole thing. No, the there's no Fukushima. No, they're uh, good? Yeah. What would it be like? We like to eat salted, those with Salted hard carrots or something? These, we need to wash these, but we call these ones tukorna. Tukorna. Okay. And we call these ones arnao in our language. Okay, so this is your music? Yeah. I wrote that in like 2018. I don't know how to classify the song. Might be R&B or something. Okay, so you pick R&B. Uh, yeah, there's no real cuss words in here. Try to make it people friendly. Who could point this evil on me? But I see it on the news in other places, so I feel blessed. And I think he took me over off a good panin and won't put a one top of good for yourself. You lose a good one, so I'm just gonna need that's me. Nice, you know, I'm missing white, but the blood in me is different. What's the song about? I heard some of some of it bounce back in English. Yeah, it's about people should be grateful, you know. I see on the news and other places. How, how much of a struggle they're living and a lot of people are, aren't really happy with their lives here and everybody else out there like we're in like probably the top top hundred hundred thousand for lifestyle or something you know if I was to use population I'd say we're among at least the top million of happiness I mean they struggle here but and out there, there's a real struggle. Like, it's pretty sad. Everybody should definitely feel blessed to be out here far from the world. Yeah, it's about as far as it gets. Yeah, a little close to Russia, but uh, I ain't worried about Russia. I mean, there's pretty much a gun in every household in Alaska, so I mean, if they're gonna attack Alaska, I don't think they'd use nukes because they want the land, but... Some Russians actually come here for um, native dancing, though. Yeah, they kind of lead a similar lifestyle to us. And almost, uh, like, they have similar languages. And, um, yeah, a lot of our words intertwine. So I, do you feel like you connect more with them than, say, people in the lower 48? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Even though they're in Russia, a totally separate country. Yeah. Yeah. You have way more in common. Yeah, yeah well, cause we of, have seen regalia too. They, uh, we actually came from that area yeah. on the Bering Sea land bridge. Yep. So yeah, we have a lot in common. I mean, you could see people who look like they're from uh, multiple different ethnicities. Like you could see people who look Mongolian, maybe Chinese, Indian. Like you could see a lot of diverse here. What do you think of the lower 48? Like when I say lower 48. I would like I to think, go there sometimes. I think it's terrifying. I've never been much. Not me. Too terrifying. Terrifying like the crime and... The crime, the crazy uh, politics, uh, riots, uh, racism. I mean, they say there's racism. But it's really just a propaganda, in my opinion. They're, they're making racism. Yeah, I'm too scary to get out of here. And why leave this place where I got so much freedom? I mean, we could walk around with a rifle and nobody's going to think nothing of it. Right. So you're not just a basketball player. Yep, I'm a wrestler, and it's probably my top sport. And I even got a scholarship down in Washington State for it. You gonna go? Um, I'm still thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there was an event I got first on, uh, Eskimo stick pull. Nice. Yeah. What is Eskimo stick pull? Um, it means you pull on the stick? Yeah, there's well, usually a um, stick like about this long. We sit on the ground kind of like this and then um, have our feet out like that. Okay. Let's go right there. So we usually put our feet together like this. And then keep our back And then straight. there's a stick 
he, gri he grips first and then I grip like this. Once when the judge says pull, we pull against each other. Either he'll pull me or I'll pull him. Okay, so whoever, whoever pulls the opponent towards them wins. Yep, or, okay. even, or even gets the uh, stick loose from their hands. Fun, right? Okay, December 2020 when I was 16. We got a couple of wells that year and um, I killed two of them. Actually, they're the only two that they got in December. And yeah, those are bowhead whale backbones. What is it like killing a whale? Um, kind of feels spiritual and has a whole bunch of um, adrenaline rush throughout your body. Like when I was doing it striking, I was kind of like shaking because of the excitement of it. Once when I killed it, it just felt fun at the same time, kind of like sad, but mm. grateful. So is it, it's super risky, right? I mean, yep. to kill, like you have to, you have to maneuver quickly, right? And mm -hmm. get to the right spot yep. and go in. And if you miss, then you could be in a lot of risk, right? Mm -hmm. They tend to like fight back. Well, not like charge out a boat, but they'll like swing their flippers around and whatnot. They're thin. Right. No, Napa got hit by a hongo, huh? Even we did. So what do you do? Is there anything you can do with the bone or no? Carve it. Carve it, yeah. A lot of people carve okay. it with them. And then okay. sell them? Yep. Hold up, Max. Max! Hmm? Here, let go. Max! Huh? I'm gonna bring them stuff home. Go ahead. One metal thing over there, I got it inside. Right there, don't you see it? <laughs> you guys just doing target practice right now? Yeah, we are just looking for a single. We went one big round actually, like this way. Came all the way over that. here. Okay, so just got invited to go up the hillside there to get the sunset look out over the ocean and see this town from above. I've seen a lot of the world. This is one of the most beautiful places by far I've ever been. It's really special. Look at that massive cone. Russia's over there. We got a lot of relatives in Russia right now, still to this day. Just right over. Yeah. That well, waterway. When I was a younger kid in the 90s, they would always come by boat. Yeah. They would stay for at least two weeks or so, just celebrating with us. Right now, I guess it's kind of hard to get out here. So you guys don't see any boundary, really, between the countries, because those are your people. Yeah. Right? Yeah, we, we actually have, like, the same clansmen over there. Oh. As on the island. Interesting. Is there much of a hierarchy these days? Like there's a, is there a chief or a tribal leader or how does that work? Uh, yeah, tribal leader. There's okay. a tribal council. Okay. They're elected every so often, kind of like a governing body that you okay. have in the States. They could still consult with elders about like how to run things. So you have a few elders here that, you know, are always there to be consulted with? Yeah. And your, your people live pretty long, right? Some of them. Normally, yeah. A lot of them nowadays are kind of stricken with cancer. Okay. From like, I guess, past things happening to them. Okay. 
Northeast Cape. Yeah, usually Northeast Cape with all the... Northeast Cape? Yeah, the fuel spill. Okay, yeah, so way over in this part of the island or somewhere that direction? Yeah, just fall the mountain range out right to the end. There was a massive fuel spill. Yeah. How many years ago? Um, 60s, 70s. Yeah, somewhere in the 60s, I think. Okay. And they're still cleaning it up, right? Yeah. Reindeer. On you that one? bumps. Oh, you're there. You can see the two little peaks at the far end. And there's a... Oh, right in the middle, you see a way tiny little bump. Those two mountains right back. Yep, they're actually right so down. in the far oh, distance, yep. how many do they go with usually? How many in the herd? They can go by thousands, hundreds. There's yeah. how many different herds? Yeah, they always, they usually divide. Oh yeah, I see them. Wow, so impossible to see through this, but out there. How important are reindeer to your, to your lifestyle? Yeah, I mean, it was more important to them back then, I think. Right. Well, especially because less cargo came out. They're brought here from which president signed to bring however many reindeer out here. Oh, Roosevelt. it was Roosevelt, right? Yeah, Roosevelt. I think they brought some out for Gamble too, but then they ended up like slaughtering theirs. And then okay. ours ended up populating. So on one of these summer days, a lot of people come out here. Yeah. When it gets really nice out. Hot spot, they swim in that little pond back there. Okay. Sometimes in... it's cold, sometimes it's warm. <laughs> Does anyone swim in the ocean ever? Yeah, when it gets really warm out. I hate to spoil the moment here, but Derek was saying you see a lot of bottles here with Asian lettering on it or Russian lettering stuff washing up from not far away really the current up here flows pretty intensely so i guess things just come up from the south asian sea pretty easily to the shores here unfortunately so why you tied it spa up? just to just bring for, for bring transport it. yeah okay and then i'll just Get close and tie another one. Right there. This is what my grandma taught me. <laughs> this is all whalebone? That's a walrus. Walrus, okay. In there, the skull. That's where the brain is in there. So why so many walruses? out here, so many skeletons. Why are they dying? Um, these are ancient, like, 100 years, 1,000 years. Or... Oh, really? Yeah. It, the, it doesn't decompose? Mm -hmm. uh, I just realized it's it's past midnight. Yeah. Here we go, sun setting. All right, guys, what a unbelievable, unbelievable day. I'm absolutely <laughs> exhausted. So today is one of those days you could never plan for. It's one of those special days in life. This is one of those ones I'll look back on and there'll be a beautiful flashpoint. There's a feeling here where, for me as an outsider, it feels like I did leave the United States and I landed on St. Lawrence Island with its own rules, its own culture, its own landscapes. And there's a power here. I feel like a, an energy, okay? There's like an intensity. And I don't know what that's from. Is it from centuries of whale hunts? Is it from an island that hasn't been taken over by development? It's great that it can't. It's a private island that's massive. They have something very special here. I think they all know it too. All right, guys, two more days here. I'm, I'll get into some more adventures. Thanks for coming along. Until the next one.